Kadash, the water, Kai. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All praises to Ahaya Kisid. That's all praises to Anokisid. That's all praises to the great I Am loving kindness. Bahashim Yeshaya. Bahashim Moza the Lamb. In the name of the Messiah, the Hamasiach, Shalawam family. This is little son Sabal Nabaya. Family, I've been doing a lot of a lot of these shorts, the YouTube short videos. And I started doing those short videos because I realized that doing all of the super long videos that are, you know, two, three hours long, I realized that, you know, it was hard for everyone to digest that much. But now on the flip side of that, I am getting, I am getting that there are, there are people that still want longer videos, longer than these short little YouTube shorts. So I am still going to keep doing the long videos every now and then, and I am still going to keep doing the shorts almost on a daily basis. But this video will be the first of a playlist that I have entitled Portion Control. And it's meant to be not too long and not too short. That way people who are super busy but don't have a whole lot of time can actually really get some good study in. So with that said, family, let's go ahead and kick this thing off because I don't want to take too much time with just the introduction. Today, family, we're going to talk about the cherubim with the flaming sword that was placed outside of Eden. It tells you that. It says that cherubim were placed with flaming swords. We're going to read the verse. We're going to read that. Um, but we're going to we're going to discover and uncover what that really means. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what was revealed. So with that said, family, let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter three. And let's read verse 24. That's the book of Genesis, chapter three. And let's read verse 24. It says, so he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So family, right off the back, we understand that this is talking about how Eden has been cut off from the temporal world. And there is, there is a guardian. There is a guardian that keeps the way of the tree of life. So already you understand that the tree of life is located in Eden. All right. Now, family, let's get a different account. Let's go into the book of remembrance of Enoch chapter two, and let's read verse 83. And who you have talking is you have, you have Enoch and you have Yatsakad. Remember family, Yatsakad is our first father, Adam. That was the name that the father gave to Adam, Yatsakad. So let's read it. We're in the book of remembrance of Enoch, the Essene book of Haggai, and we're reading in Seth chapter two, verse 83. Actually, let's go ahead and start at verse 82. That's Seth chapter 2, verse 82 and 83. It says, 
And God said that I should dress it. And the Lord God said dressing it meant that I should worship him there and counsel and teach all the souls of the watchers to worship him by my words and also by my example. And when God said that I should keep Eden, he meant that I was to guard and protect it and watch over all the souls in the garden called Eden. And Enoch said, Father, when there was no sin there, what was there to protect it from? And why would the paradise of God need to be guarded? And Yasakad smiled upon the lad, and he said, In Eden, the Lord God had troubles, for some of the watchers of heaven there did not love him, nor bring him to mind. And the desires of the tender heart of God meant nothing to, nothing to them. And others of them loved him dearly, and they still do to this day. And all those watchers of heaven, both good and evil, followed after us through the oaks of Pathak, and now dwell here with us upon the earth. And they still have not changed, either to love him or to hate him. They are the same. So family, so our first father just explained to Enoch, that already in Eden, there were those watchers that were already choosing to fall from their first estate. These are those who would eventually become the Decadarchi. And this includes Satan or Lucifer or Semihaza. He has a gang of names. I'm not going to go through all of them right now. But he is included in this number. As a matter of fact, he was the main, what's that word? Rabble rouser. <laughs> I don't think I've used that word in um, everyday conversation yet. But I'm using it right now. He was the main rabble rouser. So, with that said, family, understand that our first father, Yasakad, was explaining to Enoch the troubles that were in Eden. Even though there was no sin there, there was still trouble. And understand what he said. He said that these watchers came out into the temporal world with mankind. So we understand that these watchers are here right now. And we talk about the watchers a lot on this channel. We understand that the holy watchers are those we refer to as the Ir Kodeshi. And the fallen watchers are those we refer to as the Decadarchi. And we understand that they are all around us because the watchers were created to be our home. But I'm not going to go too deep into that right now. Because this is portion control. All right. So going back to Genesis 324, where it says, so he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Family, I want you to know that this verse, when you read it, it gives you a very accurate depiction of cherubim and a function straight from the father of the cherubim. But family, when you look in the Bible, there are the cherubim are mentioned many times, but in this way, in this way, they are not mentioned again until the book of Psalms. So in Psalm 80 and one, it says this Psalm 80 verse one, it says, give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that dwellest between the cherubims shine forth. Okay, family. So this is a very 
accurate depiction again of the cherubims. It's mentioned it's mentioning the cherubim and it's mentioning it's mentioning how between them there is something greater. What is this talking about? Well, family, this is talking about this is talking about where the father would dwell. Understand that we dwelt with the father in Eden. Now, the father dwells in Elda. And and that's a little bit more of a deeper conversation to have. And we have had it before. And I'm sure we will have it again. But understand that this area of Eden is where the father would come to be with us. Why is that? Because sin cannot exist where the father is. Elda means God is here. But sin, sin can occur in Eden, but it cannot stay in Eden. And we have discussed this before. and We have read these scriptures. We're not going back to that right now. But understand that because of the sin that now mankind could not stay in Eden after the sin occurred. But remember, mankind was made in the image of the father. Mankind is the object of creation. Remember what we just read that Adam or Yatsakah just said. He said he was to teach all the spirits of creation how they are supposed to worship the father. Remember what he did. He named them, meaning he defined their characteristics. You understand? He literally defined who and what they are. And so the Messiah went before him because the Messiah does that. He is the God who goes before us. The Messiah went before him and placed his spirit into them. And in this way, he went behind the Messiah and then defined each one of these things. So in this way, everything that was created in Eden was what? It was made good, meaning whole, complete, and not in need of anything. Tawab. So family, I want you to understand exactly why this is important. Because these watchers, they had agency. They had agency. This is before they would seven themselves in the ways that they would go. So the fallen watchers, these fallen watchers, up until they seven themselves in wickedness, they could have repented. And the holy watchers, well, they could have used their agency to go the way of the fallen watchers. So understand what we're talking about. This is all very important because Yasakad was the example and he was the, the object of creation. He is the object of creation. We all are the object of creation. You understand? That's what mankind is. So all the holy watchers, they love us. But the fallen watchers, they feel a kind of way about us. And I want to make that clear before we move on. So with that being said, family, let's go back and let's read again in Genesis chapter three, verse 24. It says, so he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Family, he placed a flaming, he placed a cher, he placed cherubims and a flaming sword that turned every way. This gives you a very clear image when we think about it with the way our minds work today. But family, how many of you know that the scriptures were not written by people who thought the way that we think today. 
So if we read the Bible with a carnal understanding, then we're going to miss out on very spiritual things. So let's see if we can if we can get to the bottom of this, if we can understand what's happening. Let's take a look at this word sword because it says, it says cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every which way. Actually, let's look at this word flaming first. When you look at this word flaming, this word flaming family It tells you that this word in your Strong's Concordance, it tells you that this word means enchantment or enwrapping family. So with that understanding, why would, why would we go jump straight to the word flaming? Well, that's because it, 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 it gives a cool image, a flaming sword. Wow. That's, you know, that's kind of fantastical, right? But that's not what this is saying. It's not talking about a fire. This is talking about something in wrapping, right? And let's look at this word sword. Now, sword in your Strong's Concordance is 2719. And it does mean sword. It means, you know, a a sharp instrument. However, it tells you that it comes from 2717. And when you go and look at this word in your Strong's Concordance, that is 2717, well, it is the same Hebrew word and it has the exact same spelling, but it has a different definition. The definition of it is drought, kill, death. Family. Drought, kill, and death. Understand what happens when you when you read these words. When when the when the what do you call these people? The translators. When they were translating the scriptures, they would come across the word and they would say, "Oh, okay, this word has multiple definitions. So, which definition are we going to go with?" Well, let's see. It says. It says um, Lahat for flaming, and then it says Karub for sword. Um, That's what we think it is, flaming sword. Somebody else says, wait, it could be, it could say um, concealing, or it could say wrapping. And, you know, this word sword could mean drought or kill or death. And then they say, oh, that sounds stupid. Why does that sound stupid? Because that doesn't make sense. Not to the carnal mind. So we're going to go with flaming sword here. And we're going to ignore these other definitions that are clearly in the scriptures. Because we know, we know how to translate and interpret these words. So basically they made a decision. And they put it right there in the scriptures for everyone to read. And people read things and take things as a matter of fact, and they don't dig any deeper. But how many of you know that in your Strong's Concordance, 2717, 2718, and 2719 are all the same words. And these words mean drought, kill, death, destroy, destruction, and sword. They all are dealing with this aspect that means Loss of life. You understand? Loss of life. So family, what does that remind you of? Well, it's the same thing that we have always read. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2 and let's read verse 17. That's Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. It says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Uh Uh-oh. Thou shalt surely die. Can somebody tell me what what the wages of sin are? Death. 
Remember, family, sin cannot exist in Eden. I mean, it can occur there. It can happen. So it can it can exist in Eden, but it can't stay in Eden. It can't abide in Eden. It can't live in Eden. So when sin occurs in Eden, what has to happen? It has to be ejected from Eden. It has to leave Eden. It cannot stay there. You understand? And while somebody could say, well, why was the the devil allowed to sin in Eden? Well, understand that the devil is not the object of creation. You understand? So the one who can't sin in Eden, well, that was us. That was mankind. And because we sinned in Eden, we had to go. But because we are the object of creation, well, creation followed with us into the temporal world. You understand? The Irkadeshi and the Dekadachi had to come out with us into the temporal world. So now that we understand, what is this really saying? It says, let's go back to Genesis 3 and 24. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Cherubims? What is that? What did we read in the book of Remembrance of Enoch family? In verse 83 of Seth chapter 2, we read, it says, And all those watchers of heaven, both good and evil, followed after us through the oaks of Pathak. Through the oaks of Pathak. Family, these were oak trees. These were oak trees. And in between these oak trees is the portal that leads to Eden. What? Family, I explained to you, I explained to you that you can, you can look in Genesis and you can get the right understanding about these cherubims. And you can look starting in Psalms and after Psalm, and you're going to see also the correct understanding of these cherubim. But what, what is in between that? What do you read about in Exodus, in Leviticus, and many of the books in between? Well, you keep reading all about these cherubim that were placed on the mercy seat. That were placed on the Ark of the Covenant with the mercy seat in between. You understand? You keep reading about, about how these, these idols were made to be placed upon the Ark of the Covenant. Family, why would... Why would the father who teaches us not to create idols, why would he tell us to create idols and then place them on the Ark of the Covenant? Hmm? The answer is he would not. We have talked about this before. We have talked about when we go into the book of remembrance of first and second of Chi, We have talked about how it explains to you what the Ark of the Covenant actually was and how it didn't deal with the idolatry that you read about in the Old Testament. Why is this important to understand? Because now that we have the book of remembrance of Moses and it explains how Solomon corrupted the scriptures and how Solomon was a sorcerer, what have we been talking about on this channel for many years now. Well, a few years now. It feels like many years, but it's been a few years that we have been talking about how sorcery is manipulation of the source. Family, how many of you know that when you know some truth, you can turn it into a lie? So 
So the lie family, the lie family is what the Ark of the Covenant actually was as it's depicted in the Bible. The lie family is that the father would tell us to create idols. But the truth in those statements is that, well, yes, between the Oaks of Pathak, between these quote unquote cherubim, you are going to find the entrance to where we were meant to dwell with the father. You're going to find the way into Eden. But the pathway back to Eden family can only be found by following the narrow path, by following the 12 way marks that will all lead you into that narrow path. We talked about the 12 way marks before family. These are the gates that are mentioned in the book of Revelation family. You understand how it's all tied together? You understand why you have to follow the Messiah? He is the one who leads you back to the Father? It's very simple when you stop and think about it. So family, going back to this verse, Genesis chapter 3 verse 24, here's what it's actually saying. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden, Ir Kadeshi, and a portal which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. You understand, family? Why is that? Because of sin. Because sin cannot abide in Eden. You understand? So now, all of these watchers, holy and fallen alike, Irkadeshi and Dekadarchi, had to come out with us into the temporal world. So family, this, this, this portal, this portal is like a portal that really leads to destruction if you're coming from Eden. But if you're coming from the temporal world, then it leads to life. You understand? There is is death in this world. But going that way, there is life. Now, I want you to understand that this same understanding will help you better to understand Ezekiel chapter 30 verses 1 through 7 because Ezekiel chapter 30 is talking about the arm of the Lord and understanding this understanding of life and death will make you understand better the arm of the Lord. Now we have talked about the arm of the Lord multiple times here on this channel. So I'm not going to go too deep into that, but I do want to read Ezekiel chapter 30 verses one through seven. It says, the word of the Lord came again unto me saying, son of man, prophesy and say, thus saith the Lord God, how ye woe worth the day for the day is near. Even the day of the Lord is near. Day of the Lord is speaking of the arm of the Lord. A cloudy day, it shall be in the time of the heathen. And the sword shall come upon Egypt. This word sword, well, it's the same word we just finished talking about. The drought shall come upon Egypt. This is talking about the sorceries. Let's keep going. The great pain shall be in Ethiopia when the slain shall fall in Egypt. And they shall take away her multitude, and her foundations shall be broken down. Ethiopia, and Libya, and Lydia, and all the mingled people, the Chub, the men of the land that was in the league, that was in league, shall fall with them by the sword. Thus saith the Lord, they also that uphold Egypt shall fall, and the pride of her power shall come down. Family, this is talking about them upholding the filthy waters. Understand, family, that 
That's what Misrahim means. When you, when you look into the Strong's, for Egypt, that word is Misrahim. It means filthy waters. The Messiah brings you living water, but the wicked with their sorceries bring you filthy, corrupted water. You understand? So those people that uphold sorcery, manipulation of the source, that's who this is talking about. It says, and the pride of her power shall come down from the tower of Syene. They shall fall in it by the sword saith the Lord God, and they shall be desolate in the midst of the countries that are desolate, and her cities shall be in the midst of the cities that are wasted. Family, that word wasted, that word wasted is the same word that means sword and destruction and desolation. You understand? It's the same word. The translators Try to put the words there that make the most sense. So I'm bringing this up so you will understand what is going to be happening when the arm of the Lord is revealed. It will be a beautiful time for the righteous, but there will be so much confusion and destruction that is going on with the wicked because they will be able to see the Messiah in all things. They'll be able to see him and he is the judge. And they will, they will feel that judgment looking at them and they'll have a choice. They will either be able to repent or they'll have to choose evil. At that point, there will be a clear dividing line between good and evil because Ain't nobody going to be lukewarm. You understand? You're either going to be one foot in. I mean, all both feet in or both feet out like the hokey pokey. You understand? When you think about it this way, the hokey pokey is really a very spiritual concept. <laughs> all right. Now, family, I want to I want to uh, end this by reading again. I want to read again in um, in the book of Remembrance of Enoch, Seth chapter 2, except I want to read verses 82 through 84, um, just to add to the understanding. So starting at verse 82, it says, And God said that I should dress it. And the Lord God said, dressing it meant that I should worship him there and counsel and teach all the souls of the watchers to worship him by my words and also by my example. And when God said that I should keep Eden, he meant that I was to guard and protect it and watch over all the souls in the garden called Eden. And Enoch said, Father, when there was no sin there, what was there to protect it from? And why would the paradise of God need to be guarded? And Yasakad smiled upon the lad, and he said, In Eden, the Lord God had troubles, for some of the watchers of heaven there did not love him, nor bring him to mind, and the desires of the tender heart of God meant nothing to them, and others of them loved him dearly, and they still do to this day. And all those watchers of heaven, both good and evil, followed after us through the oaks of Pathak, and now dwell here with us upon the earth. And they still have not changed, either to love him or to hate him. They are the same. And you are very young. But you can know that the watchers of heaven who loved God in Eden also loved your mother and me. Both the ones who, Salakia, but the ones who hated God hated us also. And they still do even here on this side of Eden. And the Lord God called upon us to guard against those in Eden who did not love him. And we were very young. And all we had to guard with were the tender feelings of our heart. And the watchers who hated us and who would not heed our example in worship nor consider our counsel in the paradise of God learned that we would heed the counsel of those watchers who loved God and we would act upon their advice.
And by reading this family, you can understand the two different sides of the war in heaven. You can understand how against the Irkadeshi, the Dekadarchi are. And I'll tell you something else, family. The Irkadeshi are always going to speak to you in a spiritual way. But the Dekadarchi are going to speak to you in a fleshly, carnal way. And also, there's, a, there's an exception to this. Of the Dekadarchi, the one that is aluminum, that one will try to speak to you in a spiritual way to seem like a good thing. And they all will try to seem like a good thing, all the Dekadarchi. But the way that aluminum will go about it will be will be more spiritual. We'll try to emulate the comforter. You understand? Because the the Irkadeshi are the storehouse of the Holy Spirit. So they are always going to be bringing that comfort to you. You understand? But the Dekadarchi, they'll normally just appeal to the flesh. But aluminum, that one will try to try to a, a, appeal to that spiritual comfort aspect as well. This is why when you read about aluminum, when you're reading about the Dekadarchi, it says it refers to aluminum as a her. <laughs> it refers to them as a her because these spirits don't have sexual organs. They're not male or female, but based on the way they function, they are ascribed for our understanding the role of he or she. With that being said, family, I pray that y'all were edified by this portion today. I want you to know, family, that I love each and every one of you. The water. Kai. All praises to Anoki said. Bahashim Motsa, the Lamb. This is Little Son Sabal Nabaya saying, Much love and much shalom. From the Book of Remembrance of Moses. And Moses said, I do not even know what they will call your name. Who should I tell the spokesman it was that sent me? And the Lord said, Tell him that the great I am loving kindness has sent you, for they know me by that name. And Moses wept, and he said, The children of Israel will not hearken unto my words, for I am nothing before all men. And the Lord drew near, and he said, Arise, my son, and pray whatsoever you will, and it shall be done according to your word. And all the Irkadeshi will obey you, rivers will obey you, the clouds and the wind will obey you, the mountains will heed your words. And when the house of Israel shall behold all these things, surely they will give heed unto your words, for you are called and have been ordained after the order of Melchizedek, and I am your God. And this day, know that I will go before you. This day is the beginning of the time of decision for the house of Israel. 